it has been a minute since I have read a good folklore, and I always forget how much I love folklore because it's got like elements of magic in it, which I love. So today we're going to talk about the book Smother Moss by Alyssa Alaring, and I thought this book was pretty great. It follows the story of these two sisters, Sheila and Angie, and Sheila is older. She's 17, and then Angie, I think, is like 12. And Angie is kind of weird. She's always fighting like invisible zombies and thinking about the world being destroyed by nuclear destruction and all this crazy stuff. And she makes like basically what is kind of like her own tarot deck. She draws these weird little monsters and makes these little cards and the cards kind of speak to her. Like she'll go and she'll be like, okay, who, who should have this card? And then like, one of the cards will like call to her or she'll feel an energy about it and then she'll like slip it in somewhere she doesn't tell the people most of the time she just like slips it under their bed or put it sit into their knapsack or puts it in someone's shoe or in a jar or whatever so you have that and it seems like there's really some weird magical element to this okay this is a story from appalachia and it is a horror and it takes place in the mountains and it's not like super hardcore horror it's more on the mild edge of it and I liked a lot of the symbolism and like kind of weirdness that was throughout it. So you have obviously the two sisters that the story focuses around. They live really close to the Appalachian Trail. There ends up being a murder of these two women who were found dead that some man had killed. And then the man is on the loose. They have kind of a description of him and what he possibly looks like and this, that, and the other. And it turns out it's only like... I forget how many miles away. It's like 20 miles away, but where the sisters are located, where their house and their little cabin is, I think it's only like a 30 minute walk from the trail, like where the bodies were found. So it's not too far away from where they live, you know, and obviously this person, this guy's on the run. So the younger sister, the 12 year old, kind of like gets this obsession that she's going to like catch this guy and she's 12. So it's a little delusional that she's going to be able to fight off a full grown man who murdered two adult women. I don't think she really realizes this. You have that. And then you have the older sister who has like this weird psychic rope around her neck that she can actually feel. That rope wasn't always a rope. It started out with threads and they're like these weird psychic threads of this that like hangs over her. And it seems like it's almost symbolic, but then at the same time, it seems kind of real. And it's very strange. She always kind of like pushes off the stuff her sister's into and thinks her cards are kind of dumb and all that. This murder happens and then people are talking about trying to catch this guy. I think at some point the older sister ends up getting a job at the, at the local asylum where her mom works as well. And at the local asylum, she meets this boy that no one else seems to be able to see. And he has like this weird red dot in his eye and he can see her rope and he actually stepped on it. And she was like, what the F? Because he could see it and feel it. And she's like, how are you seeing that? So, and then this character that no one else can see but her. So you have him, which is weird. And then you have the younger sister. And this is where the weird tie-in comes in. And she has all her cards and stuff. And there's this one card for this character called the Worm King. And he's like this king from maybe under the mountain or some sort of like strange entity that inhabits it and there's also this whole thing with their grandmother telling this story about this man made of stone that she had run into in the mountains years and years ago where she was taken away for three days and then like came back so you got all these weird like these stories and lore and history of the people who lived on the mountain there's a lot of weird stuff going on. So it's following this strange magic that might actually be happening, like maybe trying to get this rope because the rope keeps getting heavier and heavier. And eventually it seems like this is going to kill the one sister if she doesn't get it off from around her neck. And so can they remove this rope? Can they do it without hurting her? What is up with these tarot cards the little sister is making and what's to them, the magic that the this, this stuff it's actually showing her, it's probably bad that she's got this obsession with catching this killer. She's not going to be able to fight him or take him by surprise. She's 12. Let's be honest here. So what happens with that? Does she find him? Do, do they stop this guy who had killed these women? And then there's this weird magic with a mountain. And it seems like, too, the older sister, something had happened to her when she was younger. 
that might have to do with some of the weird stories her grandmother told as well. I don't know. I still never quite figured out what it was with the rope. I think it was a lot of things. But then I think what was once a weakness becomes a strength in the end. I don't know. It's a very unique, magical story. I really enjoyed it. It's beautifully written. The words are luscious. It's very descriptive. It's very atmospheric. It's quite a fantastic read, and it's not that long. It was a quick read. I think I read it in a few days, and it was pretty great. I would highly recommend. If you are a fan of weird folk horror, the next video coming up will be about that. So stick around, check it out. And if you enjoyed hanging out today, hit that subscribe button. Come back, see me again, and we'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff.